Welcome. Today, we are here to celebrate the positive people, the people who make change and progress happen in communities and companies, in governments and organizations. These are the facilitators who make an impact and they make an impact through their groups, through facilitation. Who are these people? Well, if you met them in a lockdown party and you were to ask them, so what do you do? Some of the answers you get might be kind of varied. There's the predictable ones. They're trainers, teachers, mediators, negotiators, workshop leaders, brainstormers, event moderators, team builders, group, uh, group moderators, and group guides. But they are also agile coaches, uh, design thinkers, uh, problem solvers, visual recorders, social animators, movement makers, pedagogical designers. And then they keep talking and you're like, now I'm not sure what we're talking about because they say they're into open space or participatory leadership or liberating structures or uh, the art of hosting. My name is Jeffrey London. I'm a facilitator, but for 20 years, I still wonder what should we really call ourselves? Luckily, there is a group of people out there who know what to call us and when to call us. When the times get tough, when you've got group dynamics that are leading you into trouble, when you need an outcome of a large group of people or even a small one where it's so important that each voice is heard, that people feel included, that you can build a solution together that is better than what any individual could do. And we're gonna shed some light on how to do that. We've got experts with us today. They are the awardees of the Facilitation Impact Awards. They are so talented. You've probably been in some company sometime when like one department didn't talk to the other department. It's things like that. Sometimes it's a team, sometimes it's a company, an organization, but it's also all parts of society. Think about your different communities, how people can be polarized on different sides of an issue. Who's going to be the bridge? Who's going to bring these people together? Well, it's facilitators. But who do you think is the most difficult audience? The real challenging group. Who would that be? You don't have to look very far. It's you, facilitators. And I know you might be sitting here thinking, okay, this Jeffrey London guy, he's doing an okay job, but However, you know, I would do it a little bit differently and you make comments on the process. I know it's in our nature, but, uh, you know, my inner critic is thinking, you probably right. You probably would do a better job. So actually I'm not going to host this event. You are, you are the host of this event and we're going to do it in three parts. There's the silver, the gold, and the platinum in each part. We're gonna list the awardees. Here are the silver awardees, one, two, three, four, five. Then we're gonna have an intimate breakout where you choose which awardee you'd like to hear from. Now, to tell us a little bit more about why we're here, I'd like to invite a fellow IAF, that's the International Association of Facilitators uh, member. He's also a dear friend and he's joining us from Bangalore. He's the chair of our board, Vinay Kumar. I am so honored to be here with you to celebrate the impact that facilitation is making worldwide. So tell us, why are they called the Facilitation Impact Awards? Our awards today recognize specific impact that some organizations, some groups, and some facilitators have made with what the work that they have done. How do you go about making an impact in an association like ours? IAF is a completely volunteer-driven organization. And one of the amazing things that I love is how we as a community constantly work well with each other. So these awards are something that we as a community have gotten together. And it is an award that is assessed by IAF members. And today, we are recognizing those people who have done this amazing work. So on behalf of the 2,000 plus members that we have, 
and over 20,000 fans of facilitation around the world. I'm really excited to learn more about these organizations that are doing it. Over to you, Jeffer. Thanks, Vinay. Thanks for joining us here from Bangalore. As you can see in the word cloud, we are a really diverse group, right? So we are different ways of working, different parts of the world. And, you know, one of the pieces I saw recently was an interview with Richard Branson to Simon Sinek. He asked Simon, so what kind of business would you start now in this like COVID times? And he said, well, I would start a business that would be about bridging communities, bringing people into dialogue. You know, I mean, for facilitators, it's quite hard because we've had a bit of a rough ride the past six months, you know, reinventing our industry. But it's clear that this is a time when we need to do that. Creation, creative, willingness, motivation, uh, frustration. You can read it yourself. Um, it's, it's a feel-good moment, right? These are positive emotions that we create thanks to the interventions we do. And it's important to note that usually when we're doing an intervention, it's because things were not so good. Otherwise, it wouldn't be there. So the fact that we can turn things around and make those kind of positive impacts, it's a real brilliant story. All right. So, um, you know, one of the things about the skills that you have to make that happen, it's a little bit abstract, right? I mean, how do you actually make it happen? But luckily at the IF, we have someone who's been studying how to do that. And we've got a pre-recording from earlier in the day with her. So here she is. Uh, Julia Donahue, who's the mastermind behind the Facilitation Impact Awards. Over to you. Hi, Jeffrey. I'm really pleased to be here. How do you go about making an impact? The Facilitation Impact Awards are a great opportunity for clients and facilitators to reflect on what they've achieved. Even better than that is when clients and facilitators talk about what they want to achieve before they start the project. This helps them to quantify the measures of success that will help them nominate for an award. Julia, as we hear about the awardees, what should we be listening for? I think it's really interesting to look at the diversity of the things that people were hoping to achieve from facilitation, the facilitation techniques themselves that were used, but it's also really interesting to look for the things that were common across projects. Many of our listeners may be thinking, I'd like one of these awards. What would their first step be? The first thing to do is to get the Facilitation Impact Award guidelines. Have a look at the scoring framework and the sorts of things that evaluators will be looking for. We also run information sessions and we publicise when they'll be on. And I really encourage you to attend one of those so that you can ask your questions about how do we measure the impact of facilitation. Right. So that evaluation is done by a global team of evaluators. How do they approach it? The peer evaluation process is IAF members evaluating the submissions. Each submission is evaluated by three evaluators. They score these submissions independently, and then we ask them to compare scores. If there's a wide spread in the scores, we ask them to talk about their scores. And Julia, what are they looking for? They're the Facilitation Impact Awards, so it's not surprising that 55 points out of the 100 that are available are about impact. There are three elements here. The first one is quantified results. These are the measures of success that we're looking for that demonstrate the change. The second one is qualified results. These are what people said or the feedback that was received about what was achieved. The third part is about the extent to which the organisation was impacted or the number of people from the organisation that were involved. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us? I encourage all the facilitators out there and clients to reflect on your projects and think about nominating next year. Julia, thank you for putting the rigor in this process. Thanks so much, Jeff. I'm really looking forward to hearing the inspirational stories that are following. Thank you, Julia. None of this would be possible without you. But now, the reason we are here, the Facilitation Impact Awards. And for this, I'd like to introduce my co-host. We're going back to Bangalore, and here she is, our Regional Director for Asia. Thank you, Jeffa. It's a pleasure to be with you. Farah Ishmael, the pleasure is ours. I'm excited to share the first awardee. Okay, let's hear them. Culture transformation is a game changer, and our awardee has embedded the culture code of a mega company with facilitation. Congratulations to the Corporate University of Russian Railways, led by Roman Baskin 
and a team of incredible facilitators. Bravo to the facilitation team. You are really great multipliers. Here is our next award. Global citizenship is something we, we may each aspire to, but our next body has put those aspirations into practice. Congratulations to Fingal, the Finnish Development NGO's project, Envision 4.7, led by Rili Lapalainen, founder and chair of Bridge 47, and facilitated by Camilla Gordon. Brilliant to see how the SDGs, the UN Sustainable Development Goals, come to life with projects like this. And here is our next award. Imagine creating full engagement by shifting mindsets and behaviors within an organization. Our bodies have achieved this in three months. Congratulations, Roche for the transformation at Roche, Sweden, led by Pars Koblen Finquist and his great facilitation team. The Roche team, they make agility look easy. Sustainable childcare solutions for job seekers require a collaborative and holistic approach. Our awardees have made this possible. Congratulations, Paul Emploi, Ile de France, and the name of the project is Developing Punctual and Sustainable Childcare Solutions for Job Seekers, led by Marie Jos, director of the Pole Employer Idea Lab, and facilitated by their team. And here is our last silver award. A drum roll, please. Unifying three different approaches of innovation to achieve synergies and improve services to users more quickly is what our bodies have achieved. Congratulations, Paul Emploi, Le Lab National, for the project Performance Par La Confiance, led by Loïc Rameau, head of the National Lab of Paul Emploi, facilitated by Sebastian Massan. Congratulations to the Pôle Emploi in France and to all our silver awardees. Well done to all the silver awardees. And now I will hand it over to Jeffa. Thank you, Farah. Uh, thanks for all you do. Uh, you're such an example of living and leading with courage for all of us who work with you on the board. Right now, it's time to run to the other group so you can be with your new friends in the silver breakouts. Welcome back. All right. So I think that went pretty good. We've never done this before like this. So if there are a few glitches in the system, that's a bit par for the course. But you know, we can actually get the full story of each of these awardees on the awardee tab. And if you go there, you've got the story of each of the awardees in detail. So you can really kind of get to the bottom of what they've been up to and why what they did was so impressive. Now, what's going to happen now? Um, yeah, let's get a little feeling for what one of these projects looks like. So let it run. Transformative lifelong learning can guide Europe as we enter a new era. We hope that future EU presidencies will continue to emphasize inclusive and transformative education. If people don't understand what we're trying to move towards, uh, then how can they ever change? And that's not just for citizens, but it's also for people in government, people in parliament. And raising that knowledge and, and understanding of why global citizenship is important for all of the goals. And how it has to be embedded in education at all levels. Some kind of change needs to take place through the knowledge that one has gained. The idea is that for the next years, we can make the roadmap, bring together civil servants, researchers, civil society people, decision makers, different kind of personalities, a lot of knowledge, a lot of experiences. And hopefully through that kind of co-working, where we come together, we can exactly identify the key political processes, 
or we can set up some of the political processes which doesn't exist yet. This could be the starting point for that, that in one day, let's say in three, four years, we will have that as a political topic on the agenda of the prime ministers, for example. Connecting voices, connecting individuals, people feeling that we have a shared responsibility to change the world. Global education, global citizenship education, and all the different educations that promote social change are one of the few things that is adaptable enough to respond to current challenges in the world. Bravo to Camille Gordon for facilitating that process and to all our silver awardees. Now, let's turn our attention to the gold awards. And for this, I'd like to introduce our second co-host who's waiting for us in Asia. Hi, Jeffrey. Nice to see you. Rachel, Sonia and Kim, thank you for joining us today. Not only are you on the IAF board, you're also one of the assessors. So you've seen all of these nominations. Quite curious, what was that like? It was actually first time to look at someone else's project in depth. And it was really interesting how different possibilities around the world make impact in communities and businesses. Right, it's all about impact. So tell us, who won these gold awards? The first gold awardee that I'm going to announce today is for business growth exceeding objectives and strengthening leadership capabilities of executive leaders. Congratulations to Alvaro Quintana from Mexico for the project Growth Plan Execution and Business Development Campaign 2019. Led by Alvaro Quintana, CEO of the organization and facilitated by Chris Steele. This team invested such an intense effort. It's no wonder they had such a fabulous outcome. The second gold awardee that I'm going to announce today goes to for a school renaming committee to reach consensus to Washington Liberty High School, removing Confederate names. Congratulations to Arlington County School Board from United States for the project Washington Lee High School Renaming, led by Linda Erdos, Assistant Superintendent, uh, she's retired now, and facilitated by Sean Martin, CPA. Facilitation empowers. And in this case, the changing of the school name, it shifted the power back into the hands of the students. The third gold awardee of FIA 2020 is Growth State for building comprehensive blueprint for economic resiliency and reinvention in Charlottesville region. Congratulations to Charlottesville Regional Chamber of Commerce, United States. Uh, the project is Project Rebound and led by Elizabeth Cromwell, President and CEO facilitated by their colleague, Mary Bracken, Reed Thompson. The fourth gold awardee of FIA 2020 goes to for producing research agenda and action items for the biodiversity community. Congratulations to Luke Hoffman Institute UK project Biodiversity Revisited. It was led by Melanie Ryan, Head of Programme, and facilitated by Gillian Martin Mayhurst, CPF Master, and Randall Kranz. Bravo to Melanie, Gillian, and Randall. The next school awardee of FIA 2020 is ooh, for establishing assembly with large supporting groups and dramatic increase in community awareness. Congratulations to the Citizens' Assembly of Ankara, Turkey. The project is Citizen of Ankara Reassemble. It was led by Hare Ibrahim Ilmat, Head of Citizens' Assembly, Ankara, and facilitated by Professor and Dr. Sabah Sapel Sabin. It's beautiful how you've given your city a voice. The final gold awardee of FIA 2020 goes to 
for funding approved proposal and successful launch of mobile crisis services program. Congratulations to Western Lane Fire and EMS Authority, United States. Project Mobile Crisis Response Rural Innovation. It was led by Lori Severin, CST MCR Program Coordinator, and facilitated by Kathy Smith. Each of our gold awardees have really shown us something about how to lead in a time of crisis. So congratulations to the efforts you've put in and shown us how to have all the people around you have a voice and a say in the way forward. That wraps up our gold awardees for FIAT 2020. And now I hand over to Zephyr. Thanks, Rachel. Beautiful job there. Lovely to be with you for a moment in Seoul. So uh, what we're going to do now is go to the breakout. So I would invite our different hosts to already open up the rooms. And we'll see you back here in seven minutes. Okay, welcome back. All right, so I hope that worked out. It sounds like each of the different uh, breakout rooms on Space worked out. For those of you who are getting a drink or chatting with friends at home, welcome back as well. We are, let's see, where are we in the program? Yeah, well, first I wanna say thank you to all the gold, gold awardees to share your stories, share your insights. We're taking notes. We wanna do what you did, it's brilliant. Uh, we're going to turn our attention to the Platinum Award winners. Tech team, if you could roll the film and see you in a little bit after that. These projects are incredible. We see how facilitation is an integral part of every strategy for change. It brings impact, it makes facilitation part of the culture, it includes all the people in the process. But some people and some projects go above and beyond. They hit all of those criteria and they do it to the highest level. These are the recipients of the Platinum Facilitation Impact Awards. To present the Platinum Awards, let's go to Jamaica. Hi, Jeffa. I'm so glad to be here. I'm really looking forward to telling the world about the impact that facilitation has. This is exciting. Before we hear about the awards, we want to turn the spotlight on one particular awardee. This was a film that came in from the organization who received the award, talking about her experience with her facilitator. And for us, it really embodies the power of partnership and the power of facilitation. Hi, I'm Amy Brin, the Executive Director and CEO of the Child Neurology Foundation. After working with Paul Cooper, I see that facilitation is not just a, another form of meeting management. Paul has taught me that true authentic facilitation is about preparing and then holding a space for vulnerable, maybe even uncomfortable, but necessary dialogue to occur. Ego, false agendas, and other distractors are, they're just easily identified and then they're discarded because they cannot hang within the frequency of the conversation. It's this blend of organizational communication and psychological science all matched with the beautiful art of humanity. It's not limited to achieving a set goal because the conversation itself is the desired goal. I've seen colleagues who wouldn't even sit at the same table now enter into collaborative projects because they are free to do so in their own stride, if you will. There's no control over each other. There's no control over ideas or resources. Just this, this shared willingness to work together to create a bigger impact for our shared community. I believe when you're in the presence of a facilitator that can bring this art, if you will, to light, it demands that truth be spoken and truth be seen. And when I work with an expert facilitator, I feel like I can be more courageous in using my voice on behalf of these children and their families. For the facilitator sets the stage for true, vulnerable, and altruistic conversations to be had. And I know that the roots of that conversation 
are planted in creating a better tomorrow for these children and their families. I say thank you, Paul Cooper, for all you have taught me and for the profound impact you have had on the child neurology community and hopefully will continue to do so. We are better for having you in our midst. You so rightly deserve tonight's award. Congratulations, Paul. I love that. Now, back to Jamaica, to Jillian Chambers, another facilitator who brings out the heart in all of us. So our first platinum award this evening goes to Amy Brin's organization, which is the Child Neurology Foundation, and you've just seen the amazing video. She commissioned the facilitator and IAF CPF, Paul Cooper. Great example of how to deepen dialogue. And thank you again to Amy Brin and Paul Cooper. Our next Platinum Award goes to the administration of the Governor of St. Petersburg, Russia. This project was commissioned by Igor Morishev. And the name of the project is the actualization and communication of the currently valid value system of St. Petersburg State and municipal government. It was designed to clarify, communicate and integrate values into their management system and was facilitated by Andre Kolashnikov and a team. This is a great example of facilitating change in governmental systems. Our next Platinum Award goes to Coloplast Wound and Skin Care based in Denmark. This effort was led by Christopher Hoffman and the name of the project is Managing the Gap Consensus Process. It was designed to achieve an international consensus on how to assess and treat chronic wounds to decrease the burden on both patients and healthcare systems. And the facilitators were Kimberly and Mark Bain. So welcome back to Cole Class and the Baines team. It seems like just last year we were offering you a platinum award in Italy. Bravissimo. Our next platinum award goes to Kingsway Mall based in Edmonton, Canada. The client is Susan Lovey, and the name of the project is the Kingsway Innovation Village. This project was about engaging the staff of a retail mall to find ways to remain relevant and successful in times of industry dis disruption, uncertainty and change. It was facilitated by Tamara Ibel and her team. Great example of building collaboration, especially in tough times like these. Kudos to Tamara Erbo. This is a record number of facilitation impact awards that you've received over the years. Further congratulations goes to Region Emilia Romagna, based in Italy. The client is Sabrina Francescini, and the name of the project is the Participatory Community of Practice of the Region Emilia Romagna. The project was designed to connect a group of policy making change agents to collaborate, develop, share, learn, apply, and continuously improve skills for the design, management, and facilitation of processes. It was facilitated by Paolo Martinez and his team. These projects give us such hope. If we can make change happen in Italy, in Turkey, in Russia, we can make change happen anywhere. It is in your hands. Ladies and gentlemen, our last Platinum Award for the evening goes to the Rotary Bangalore Indiranagar from India. The client was Manoj Agarwal, and the project was to optimize COVID-19 relief initiatives in Bangalore. It was designed to get the Rotary Club to work with other stakeholders to collaborate and work seamlessly to eliminate duplication and help families in need due to the COVID-19 pandemic. It was facilitated by Sanjay Ugar. So a huge congratulations to all of our awardees, wherever you are in the world, whether it's good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Well done. Thanks, Jill. Great to spend a little time in Jamaica with you. We're all sitting in lockdown here in Brussels, a little gray outside. So it's nice to imagine some palm trees and some positivity. All right, so now you know the drill. We are gonna go into breakouts if you're on the house space thing. If you're not, you're gonna have seven minutes to uh, chat with your friends or neighbors or uh, 
tweet about us on social media. You can do whatever you want. That's where you need to go. And then we'll be back here in seven minutes. Enjoy. Thank you. Actually, I'm almost upset at you. I mean, you have put the bar so high, but it's great because you you set an example for all of us. So for all the leaders and facilitators who are joining us today, they are thinking, you know, how will we get above this challenge? How will we move forward? And you are providing us with a way to do that. You know, so thank you for a leading example, really brilliant, and it's a real privilege to to understand how you work and to you know, borrow little pieces because we're going to be taking bits of that for our own projects. Facilitation is a balancing act. It's people, it's process, it's individual, it's group, it's problem. Oh, I'd like to be solution, but sometimes there's some unforeseen circumstances, some pressures, some personalities, some politics. And that's when we remember that facilitation is a dynamic process. Here at the IAF, we wanted to make a trophy that was as memorable as the experiences that you create. Over the coming days, I'll be busy writing labels so that each client organization and each lead facilitator can get one of these trophies in the mail. If you are one of the awardees, you will be watching your mailbox and you're gonna be looking for one of these big black boxes to come in the post. It'll be there, to, yeah, give us a little month to get it around the world. So, um, that's pretty much it. The only real big thing to thank is uh, you, right? So thank you for being here. Thanks for reflecting on your process, thinking about your practice, being open to doing things in a different way and staying committed to you know, how can you make a difference and knowing that these are the tools and the techniques and the competencies that you can employ to make a difference and promote the power of facilitation worldwide. All right, that's it from me. I've got someone else on the line who I'm very curious to hear from and he's gonna close us out tonight. So Vinay, how was that? Wow, what an amazing group of awardees this year. On behalf of the board, all our listeners, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for the awardees for making that impact. And um, I'm looking forward to a lot more submissions next year. Let's spread the power of facilitation. Go facilitate.